Thanks very much. Um, maybe just first of all to say who Airgrid is. We are the, the state-owned company. We operate and manage and control the power system across the entire island. And we also plan for its future development in terms of the transmission system and what's needed. So what we like to say is that we make sure that the lights stay on today, tomorrow and every day. Um, I think that, as, just to pick up on what Mario was saying, the, the energy system needs to change. And it's undergoing a paradigm shift. The, 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 the imperative towards sustainability is driving a paradigm shift in terms of how power systems are constituted and managed. And what we're seeing as well is that increasingly uh, ICT is playing a role in how we deliver on those challenges. And you can even see that in terms of the panel that's here today uh, and, and the various collaborations that are going on around the industry that I'll talk about. Um, maybe just to first of all take the European perspective on... Does this click the slide? Oh no, it's a pointer. Hey. Um, so just to look at the European Energy Roadmap to 2050 that was recently published and to take two dimensions of it. The first thing is to say that electricity is going to double in terms of its share of the energy mix. And part of the reason for that is that in terms of the electricity mix itself, and depending on what scenario you pick in that roadmap, but the, the percentage of renewables within that is going to rise to between 25% and over 90%. And that is a staggering transition in terms of the electricity system that we have today. And I suppose that's why electricity is being used to bring renewables and sustainability into the wider energy mix in a European context. And it's how do we manage that. And what I want to maybe talk about this morning is the great work that's going on in Ireland here and the opportunity we have through the presidency to showcase that and to leverage the experience that we have here of Ireland as a world leader in integrating renewables and how that can be exported internationally. So to put that in context in terms of where we are in Ireland, on an all-island basis, energy from renewable resources last year was about 17%, slightly higher in the Republic, slightly less in Northern Ireland. But both jurisdictions are on a clear path to deliver 40% of energy, of electricity from renewable resources by 2020. The vast majority of that will be delivered by onshore wind farms in Ireland and Northern Ireland. And that, and that is a huge shift in terms of how we're going to do it. It's also, because we are an isolated energy island, it is far ahead of what any other synchronous power system is doing right around the world. And if you just compare Ireland and Northern Ireland on the left over here with what the other synchronous power systems are doing in terms of penetration of wind onto the system, you can see that we're, we're massively ahead of them. And the challenge to doing this is that because wind only blows some of the time, if you want to get to 40% on average, you're going to have periods when you have zero during the year. So therefore, at other times, you need to manage significantly more than 40%. And what we see is that you need to get to, by 2020, you need to get to 75%. You need to be able to manage your power system where 75% of your electricity demand is being served by renewable and wind resources. Nowhere else in the world is doing that. Today, we we'll operate the system up to 50% of it being served by wind, and that happens regularly on the system today. Um, and we have a program of work, and I'll talk about that later, to, to transition that from 50 to 75%. Nowhere else in the world I was even doing 50%, much less thinking about how they get to 75%. So here's the opportunity for Ireland to solve those challenges, to be pioneers in this, and to leverage that uh, and, and export it effectively to, to the rest of Europe. But in order to do this, and both the Minister and Murray touched on this in, in their presentation, you need energy infrastructure. Um, we need to develop the transmission system. This resource tends to be in places where the transmission infrastructure is not strong. Along the west coast in the southwest and up in Donegal, terrific wind resource. We need to harness that and we need to get it to where the demand is, typically on the east coast. And that involves significant transmission infrastructure. I noticed in the foreword to this conference, the words of the Taoiseach, he talked about uh, wanting the presidency to focus on delivery. I think that resonates with what we need to do in terms of energy infrastructure here. We need to move forward and start delivering some of the major infrastructure projects. And through the early parts of next year, you'll see Ergrid coming out with several of those projects and moving them through the next stages, uh, progressing them along. Um, our program, it, it, 
is about 3.2 billion over the next number of years out to 2025 in terms of upgrading transmission links and new uh, transmission lines. We've also just completed the construction of the east-west interconnector, a high voltage uh, connection to Wales, and that's going to transition into commercial operation in the next while. And that was very, uh, very gratefully, that was supported by the European Commission through uh, a grant uh, which enabled an awful lot of other funding to be unlocked. And it was a great example of how a European grant can unlock a, a whole suite of, of commercial funding to allow a project like that go ahead. <coughs> You can see just in the context of European energy networks that 200 billion is an estimate of the cost uh, of infrastructure that's necessary uh, between now and 2020. A lot of concern that, that won't, it won't be possible to deliver that for reasons of access to finance, for reasons of public procurement, but that's an estimate of the scale of infrastructure that's actually necessary in order to deliver on this. But infrastructure alone is not going to be enough. It's only part of the answer. We need, to do, we need to deliver this infrastructure in a smart way, and we need to integrate it into a smart grid and make the systems that we have better, more intelligent, and get the most out of them. Because as the level of renewables increases, we see complexity on the system increasing, and we also see user participation increasing, and we talked a little bit uh, about heating systems and things uh, like that, and smart meters. All of this will see the user, the person in their home, able to participate more actively in, 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 the, in the energy system. In all likelihood, they won't do this in a very active way. They'll set it up via an app on their iPhone and set it there to maximize their utility, be it low carbon, be it low price or whatever. But with the introduction of smart meters, with the introduction of EVs, we'll see that dynamic coming into a power system, which to date has largely had passive users who just flick a switch to, to use the power. Just want to maybe just mention some of the elements of the program, uh, the smart grid program that we have uh, underway at the moment. And in the conference brochure, there's a, uh, a pack explaining our DS3 program. And that is focused around what are the things operationally that we need to do to manage a power system with 75% of your power coming from a variable resource like wind. How does that change from one where it's, all, where it's largely based around large conventional power stations? So changing and evolving the operation of the power system, that's what that DS3 program is all about. The second bit is around technology and infrastructure. We need to ensure that the, the infrastructure that we do build, that we get the most out of it, and the infrastructure that's there already, that we get the most out of it. So this is things like uh, deploying advanced technologies on transmission lines to enable you to get more power down them to advance sensing on power lines such that in real time you can see what the sag on a line is and what the temperature of it is so that you can optimize in real time how much power you put down a, a transmission line. And that has already seen significant savings in terms of the, the grid development program over the next number of years. The third element is, is demonstration projects and we launched this about uh, four months ago uh, and there's been a huge uh, interest in it right across uh, the industry, not only the energy industry but, but wider afield. And what we're looking to do there is to partner with industry to trial out new and innovative solutions that either exist in other markets or exist in other fields or industries and see can they solve real problems on the Irish power system in a very effective way. And we've two of them up and running now. One of them uh, looks at control systems on a wind turbine. And the second one, uh, Mari would be delighted to hear, is all about heating in homes. Uh, it's in conjunction with the, the Greenway project, looking at to the extent that you deploy um, sophisticated, advanced electric storage heaters, the extent to which they can also provide services to the power system itself. Um, so work is underway on that. The fourth aspect to it is, is the Smart Grid Innovation Hub, and this is something we launched with the National Digital Research Centre. Um, and this is about trying to foster innovation and entrepreneurship in sm the smart grid space. There's huge barriers to entry in the energy industry. It's capitally intensive. It's highly complicated. So what we're trying to do is to, to break down some of those barriers, to get those nuggets of good ideas, to put them into a sandbox where they can be tested, they can be trialed, we can see if they can solve problems, and to nurture them through the commercial expertise and, and incubator type facilities that exist at the NBRC. And around that, to help it, we've put a, an industry advisory council to make sure that it's all joined up with people like uh, ESB, SCAI, but also people like Invest NI, Enterprise Ireland, 
the International Energy Agency, just to make sure that you know, the right people are looking at these projects so that they get developed in the right way uh, going forward. Through all of this, research and innovation is absolutely critical in order to transform in the power system. This is, just a, this is a schematic of one of the research initiatives that's underway uh, in Dublin. It's the strategic research cluster run out of UCD. And what I just wanted to, to, to show here is the extent to which it's not just academia anymore. It's academia and industry. And it's all about research and innovation solving those problems that are core to the industry today uh, and, and to moving forward. One of the unique benefits we have in Ireland is that we're a relatively small industry, we're a relatively small country, so you can get everyone around the table and solve problems. That doesn't exist in continental Europe, it doesn't exist in any other big economies. So there's an opportunity to do and to, to get trial, trials and innovative solutions up and running and in place here uh, much quicker than anywhere else and much more effectively. So that's why there's a huge potential for Ireland to be an exemplar to take the, stuff, the, the solutions that we're developing here to problems that we see, because we have a huge nat nat um, natural resource and because we have an ambition to harness that for the benefit of the country, it means that we need to solve these problems that aren't yet visible on other power systems but will come in the next years and decades ahead. So there's an opportunity to leverage that. We had um, Nancy Pelosi, uh, Congresswoman Nancy Pelosi over recently in our control centre with a delegation of uh, congressmen and women from the US. And what they remarked was that Ireland is small enough to trial something at, uh, at scale. Uh, and Sorry, it's, it is possible to trial something at scale and it's large enough to be relevant. And yet you can do it uh, before rolling it out in some economy like the US or something like that. So, there's a huge interest in doing something and seeing solutions deployed on a power system like Ireland and then rolled out across Europe or, or the US or like that. So I think in terms of sustainable power system and moving forward, there's, a, there's an imperative to get this right, to underpin the economy because there is a transformation undergoing, there is a paradigm shift in terms of the move to sustainability and we need to do it in a way that one, we ensure we have secure energy supplies to underpin the economy, um, but also in a way that drives sustainability going forward as well. Um, so with the natural resource that we have and with the work that we're doing across the industry and the collaboration that's happening, I think there's a huge opportunity for Ireland to be an exemplar of how to build a sustainable power system and then export that around the world. So with that, thank you very much.